Welcome to the update. This is a NFL preview series that Justice and I are going to work on over the summer on SettingEdge.com, home of the critically acclaimed Grammy Award winning Setting the Edge podcast. Uh, we're going to do two parts to our NFL preview series. So we're going to do an NFL preview for each team, but Justice is going to do a written post on SettingEdge.com, and I'm going to come back with video content. And it's all going to be tied together. So the work that Justice is doing is mainly uh, efficiency based numbers, you know, contract, blah, 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 stuff like that. And I'm going to pick out pieces of information that I find interesting in Justice's piece and the numbers that we found on sportingcharts.com and other places, uh, and make little film breakdowns about it. So we're starting with the AFC North as based on a vote on Twitter. And we're going to start off with the Cleveland Browns. And what really struck out to me when looking at the numbers for the Browns and their defense was really bad last year, but, uh, they were 29th in opposing yards per carry. They were 30th in tackle for loss percentage, and they were 31st in run percentage, which means that uh, that's when you're 31st or you know, in those higher numbers for run percentage, that means teams decided to run the ball on you a lot. So they had the highest percentage of running plays around them. So basically, teams knew that they sucked uh, versus the run and just decided to exploit that because you know if you can run the ball on somebody, you can – you can pretty much always beat them. So we're going to start off and look at where their run defense failed last year. I mean, obviously you can look at every play. So I just t- uh, pulled out three clips from last year and uh, just to fill, uh, combine with my work for NFL 1000, I have a good understanding of pretty much every defensive line in the league. So Jamie Meter is the one tech or the two eye on the, in between the center and the right guard. And he was very, very, uh, below average to put it kindly against the run last year and you're going to see that even when Danny Sheldon plays well he's a three tech it, it doesn't matter because Jamie Meter just continually gets blown out of his gap so it's going to rewind right here and you see you know they're running a little counter tray action here and Meter just gets swallowed up by the right guard and again Meter reach blocked and then pancaked and that makes life really hard on Danny Sheldon, who has to run all the way, pretty much all the way across the field. He stays in his B gap and then kind of has to come make the tackle about five yards down the field. And then again, Jamie Meter is getting destroyed by the Cowboys off of the line. Now, they did that to a lot of people, but you got to be able to hold your block better than this. And when, even when you have Danny Sheldon playing well to the, net, to the right of him, He's making life really hard for Sheldon and the rest of the defense. Now, one of the bright stars they have on defense is Christian and Kirksey, who looks like he's going to be in store for a nice little extension this offseason. And he's a really athletic player that has some really nice splash plays in the run game, and you'll see him shoot the alley here for a tackle for loss. And another underrated facet of his game is his physicality. Watch him come down here, blow up the fullback, make the stuff at the line of scrimmage. So he's going to be one of their keys. And another key uh, that I was talking about before, Danny Shelton, he's their nose tackle and play some three tech two in their nickel sets. So he is uh, moving into the B gap on the right side and comes down and makes a play there. Here he is splitting a double team right there. And coming back after the edge is set. And that's why you set the edge, <laughs> like our podcast, uh, but so that your teammates on the inside can come make a play. So watch Danny Sheldon. He splits a double team to the center and the left guard. And once the ball comes back to him, he's right there to make the tackle. And here we just have him blowing up Jason Kelsey. So, you see, I think Danny Sheldon was actually one of the better run defending defensive tackles in the league last year. But when you have a lot of... Uh, Shaky play around you, it's hard to showcase that. And they added Miles Garrett in the draft, who really sometimes doesn't even know what the hell he's doing versus a run. I mean, when you look here, he doesn't really play his rules. He's just running straight into the the backfield. But when you have the burst and explosion and athleticism that he has, sometimes you can get away with those plays. And normally you want to see your defensive end right here go and play underneath the right guard that's pulling across. But, hey, if you can run a, a 4-6 at 270 pounds – so sometimes you, you got to live with those plays as a coach, and you'll see it again here. He's able to shut down the B or the C and the D gap by himself. I mean, that, that's ridiculous athleticism. 
So he should be an asset to their run defense after, you know, he, he gained some more NFL season. In the third round, they drafted Larry Ogunjobi for Charlotte, who is pretty raw, I think, but he has the athleticism that you really look for in your three technique. So this is an, a run play, but you can see how quickly he gets up the field after being his man the, the initial time. And now we have Caleb Brantley from Florida, who was their sixth round pick. And he's he didn't test as well as Ogunjobi did, but he's really polished with his hand usage. And he had some legal issues before the draft, so getting him in the sixth round was really, really a steal for Cleveland. So yeah, if those guys can, especially those younger guys, Garrett, Ogunjobi, uh, Caleb Brantley, if those guys can figure it out and become major contributors day one, I'm not saying that the Browns will have a good run defense because you still need to see all the, the parts in motion, especially you know, uh, Emmanuel Ogba and Carl Nassib coming into their second years. You, you still need to see, see it before you can believe it. But on paper, this front seven looks uh, a lot improved. And they did sign Jamie Meter to a two-year deal, but it was worth like $1.1 million in total. So that's not even a guy that's guaranteed to make uh, the final 53. So this is the first episode of the update, the first video episode of the update. We'll be back uh, soon with uh, the, our next scene that we're working on, the Baltimore Ravens. See you guys then.